Television, despite popular belief, won't melt your mind. Well, that's unless you accidentally tune into David Cronenberg's video drive, but that's a different story entirely. The thing is, although we're often wound up in the comings and goings of horror cinema on the silver screen, more often than not, that small little box known as a TV is the better vessel for long form horror stories. You see, instead of just two or so hours to get terrified, we have an entire season's worth, perhaps even several. And thankfully for us, we're living in the golden age of television, and horror certainly hasn't been left behind. Let's take a look. Hello horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finches. Today, we curiously take a look at the top five most terrifying modern horror series. Roll the clip. For the curious amongst you, that clip was from the resounding British anthology series Black Mirror, created by the genius that is Charlie Brooker. And that particular clip was from the awesome season 4 entry Metalhead, which indeed is very much a horror episode. However, I wouldn't ever say that Black Mirror is consistently horror, and so today it ends up as our most honourable of honourable mentions. Also, it's important to note that by modern, we mean anything released after 2000, as we've already got a best TV series list of the 20th century, so if you haven't seen that, Go and watch it. Get ready. Because talking about Charlie Brooker and horror, he certainly already has that feather well and truly tucked within his cap. Listen, I'm not going to stand here and fanboy over Charlie Brooker for an entire video, although I certainly could, but it's important to note that the man is a genius, and one of his finest attempts in the horror genre as a whole was with 2008's Dead Set, and for a series that was only five episodes long, it certainly earned its place on this list. Yeah, whilst it's coming in at number five down to the short length of its span, don't let that dissuade you, because this is one of the finest zombie horror series ever created. You know, over in the United Kingdom, we like to poke fun at things, but more importantly, we like to poke fun at ourselves, and what better way to do that? than to take one of our already existing shows, Big Brother, and then turn it into a horrifying satire of cannibalistic zombies. Yeah, sounds about right. And really, it's a perfect equation, because as the series initially sets out, what better place to try and survive the zombie apocalypse than within the Big Brother house? The show itself, beginning with episode one, Outbreak, takes place primarily on the actual set of the Big Brother series. The five episodes which were aired over five consecutive nights slowly unraveled everyone's biggest fear. And no, it wasn't the renewal of another Big Brother season, but instead, the arrival of a zombie outbreak. Listen, the actual mechanics of the apocalypse don't need any kind of wider explanation, although in classic Danny Boyle-esque fashion, its origin is touched on because it doesn't matter. The fear behind the series was within its simplistic approach, and it works so, so well. I mean, to even lay out the authenticity, Davina McCall herself appears in this series, alongside Krishnan Guru Murthy and a whole host of actual Big Brother contestants. I can't say anymore, dead set, it's short and sweet, and it's one of the finest modern horror series ever created. Swinging in at number four, Scream Queens, 2015. She looks like Jason Voorhees. No, Jason was deformed since like birth. She looks like Freddy Krueger. All right, guys. Okay, listen. Calm down. I get it. I know that I'm going to pick up some flack for featuring this particular entry, but hear me out. Because one thing that we've been lacking in our healthy, balanced horror diet is horror comedy. And if you're asking me, this show is one of the finest demonstrations of that in recent memory. Also, listen, this one goes without saying, but no, this show is not scary at all. So consider this a four out of five kind of list on the terror scale. But now that's out of the way, we can firmly establish that Scream Queens is freaking fantastic. I love this show, and I myself was actually surprised as to how much I found myself adoring it. We often talk about the function of horror comedy, which is to take all of the tropes and styles of the horror genre and then poke fun at them, and that's exactly what this series does. And whilst you might think that the other series by the same creators, American Horror Story, should have featured on this list, I just don't think it's consistent enough to stand up to some of the other traditionally more terrifying entries on this top five. Scream Queens, though, is horror comedy, and it only gets better. Created by Ryan Murphy, Brad Falchuk, and Ian Brennan, the first season of Scream Queens tells the tale of the Kappa Kappa Tau sorority as they're threatened by the re-emergence of a serial killer known as the Red Devil. The sorority 
majority is led by the one and only Chanel Oberlin, played by the remarkable Emma Roberts, who carries this show in the palm of her hand. Honestly, she is phenomenal in this series. And alongside her fellow Chanel's numbers two, three, and five, played by Ariana Grande, Billy Lord, and Abigail Breslin, the show descends into chaos in classic 90s slasher style. This show is Mean Girls meets every slasher movie ever made, and because of that, it's brilliant. I don't care what anyone says, Scream Queens is great. And it sucks that it got cancelled, but those two seasons are brilliant. Next up on number three, The Strain, 2014. Okay, now we can get between the meat and bones of the television terror that plagues this list. The Strain, a show which many of you may know, one of the most inventive and genuinely terrifying pieces of vampire fiction in recent times. And who better to deliver that than the main man himself, Guillermo del Toro, alongside the awesome horror novelist, Chuck Hogan. And you know what? The production history behind this TV series just makes me admire del Toro even more as an uncompromising champion of the screen. You see, initially back in 2006, after pitching the concept of this series to Fox, Del Toro outright refused as a number of Fox executives wanted to turn it into a comedy. Imagine that. Imagine one of the most inventive and forward thinking pieces of vampire literature being turned into a comedy. Yeah. But thankfully for us, Del Toro instead teamed up with novelist Chuck Hogan, outlining the incredible depth of his story, and then a few years later, networks were just begging the duo to pick it up. The strain spanning over four awesome seasons, the quality of which admittedly dips a little in season three, but comes back for a phenomenal final season, was released way back when on July 13th, 2014. The show centers around a man named Dr. Ephraim Goodweather, played by Corey Stoll, the head of a special CDC unit known as the Canary project as they attempt to unravel a particularly precarious event. An airplane has landed at JFK airport and everyone on board is dead, afflicted with an ancient strain of vampirism passed from person to person by a species of strange parasitic worm. I won't say any more regarding the Strigoi because the premise of the show itself is reason enough to dive into it, but really some of the twists and turns this series takes whilst also fleshing out one of the most intriguing concepts of vampires in a long time makes it a must see for any horror fan. Also, there are more than enough genuinely terrifying moments in this series. I mean, it's Guillermo del Toro, guys. Give it a watch. Coming in at number two, The Terror, 2018. Okay. Now we're talking, because what better way to depict the most terrifying modern horror series than with the terror itself? Literally, that's what it's called. What did you expect, guys? Now, all jokes aside, this show is phenomenal. It really is. And it was such an undiscovered gem at the time of its release in March of last year. But now, still, I'm not entirely sure whether it's receiving the recognition that it truly deserves. So, what are we waiting for? Go and watch it. And season two is already midway through, so you're not missing out on too much. Initially created by David Kaganitz, the man responsible for the 2018 remake of Dario Argento's Suspiria, The Terror is an anthology series. And its first season, based upon the Dan Simmons novel of the same name, tells a particularly terrifying historical tale that occurred in the icy wilderness of the Arctic Circle, one that you may be familiar with. The Franklin Expedition, where both HMS Terror and HMS Erebus were frozen in ice in their attempt to seek the elusive Northwest Passage. But this tale is a little different. I won't say anything because it's well worth your own discovery, but season one is phenomenal. The pacing is fantastic. It's filled to the brim with anxiety inducing set pieces as things fall from bad to worse. And also, the performances in season one are absolutely brilliant. Jared Harris, Tobias Menzies, Kieran Hines all deliver some remarkable acting. And genuinely, most importantly, this show is terrifying, and the less you know about the horror that lurks in the Arctic, the better. Now, if that sounds awesome, season two title as The Terror Infamy takes place on the west coast of the US during World War II and centers on a Japanese American community being haunted by an ancient spectre, the Bakemono. I haven't yet seen it because I'm waiting for the show to finish in its entirety so I can just binge it, but if season one is anything to go by, we're all in for a treat. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, The Haunting of Hill House. My Problem. Your problem no, is you think problem. you know what my happened problem. that night. My you problem is that the wrong parent died. <sighs> <sighs> Guys, 
It just has to be. Honestly, I don't say this lightly. Mike Flanagan's The Haunting of Hill House is one of the finest pieces of television of the past few decades, and that's not just including horror. I hate to bound about the term too loosely, but Hill House truly is a masterpiece. Watching this series, and keep in mind I binged the whole thing in two days, I knew that I was witnessing something special. I love this show. So much so that I created a rundown for this channel detailing just exactly why it was so special to horror as a genre. And if you'd like more information, go and check that out now. But put it this way, how many series have you seen, movies included, that can bring you to tears in its finale? Yeah, maybe I'd had too many beers, but holy moly, this show got to me. Stephen King claimed that this series was close to a work of genius, and for a series based upon an already pre-existing classic of horror, that's really saying something. Written and directed by Mike Flanagan, the man responsible for 2013's Oculus and 2016's Hush, The Haunting of Hill House tells the tale of the Crane family, their lives split by two opposing timelines, them as adults following the effects of their childhood, and them as children as they move into the notorious Hill House. Based upon the definitive 1959 novel of the same name by Shirley Jackson, Flanagan takes all of the key components that make up an iconic haunted house story and yet expertly rearranges them for a modern audience. Part of the horror laid out in this series is isn't just the paranormal, but instead the very physical, the very personal, and the emotional trauma presented in this series is just as effective as the spirits that linger in Hill House. This film covers addiction, obsession, the dangers of isolation, and the breakdown of the family unit. Really, I could talk about this show for days, and all of the small details that make it so remarkable and worth discovering are for your own to discover. Also, the second season, The Haunting of Blind Manor, based on the turn of the screw by Henry James, is set to be released in 2020, so there's something to look forward to. But until then, just watch this masterpiece of horror on repeat. Well, there we have it, horror fans. Our list for the top five most terrifying modern horror series. What do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree, have any more to add to this list? Then let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below, as well as any choice picks of your own. Before we depart from today's video, though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more resounding remarks from over the past few days. Rebecca Howell says, when will you be making your movie? If you had an opportunity, what would you make a horror movie about? Great videos. You've got another subscriber from Michigan, USA. Hey Rebecca, welcome aboard and thank you very, very much. You know what? That is a great question. And if I was to make a horror movie right now, I think I'd make something about ghost towns or a Lovecraftian cult mystery set in the Outer Hebrides. Yeah, actually that's, that's, that's exactly what I'd make. That is exactly what I'd make. Stay tuned for more, I guess. Well, on that note, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Cheers for sticking around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video, or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy.